Everybody, this week's Torah portion is Parshas Vayeshev. Parshas Vayeshev is a parsha that's very close to my heart because my friend Chase and I just decided not so long ago that we wanted to conquer the entire Torah. And the way we decided to do it was that every week we would spend our time doing one verse in depth, and that's what we do. We've been very consistent, thank God. And we started from this week's Torah portion. So I end up knowing this week's Torah portion better than any Torah portion in the entire Torah. And I want to tell you a little gem that was discovered in this week's Torah portion. There are 112 verses, 112 sentences in this parsha. Of those, 104 all start with the letter Vav, the Hebrew letter Vav, which in English means and. So out of 112 sentences in this week's Torah portion, 104 of them start with the word and. Now why is that? That doesn't happen anywhere else in the Torah. In fact, there's only one other book in the entire Tanakh where that happens, and I'm not going to tell you, but if you guess it, you can come over to me on Shabbat and tell me, and I'll give you a little prize. Now, why is it that in this week's Torah portion, everything starts with end? So, to understand that, you have to understand two things. One, what is this week's Torah portion about? So, if you look at it from an outside perspective, what you see is as follows. It seems like a series of unfortunate events. First, Joseph gets sold by his own brothers, which is the ultimate treachery, stabbed in the back. Then, out of all places he gets get sold to, he gets sold to Egypt, which had a reputation that no one ever escaped, no slave ever escaped. So, for all intents and purposes, this was it. Goodbye, never see family again. Then, when things couldn't get any worse, who does he get bought by? Somebody who tries to seduce him and will stop at nothing to get him to commit the, the ultimate infidelity. And if that isn't bad enough, he then gets thrown in prison for a crime he didn't commit. And you can imagine the prisons in Egypt in those days was a lot worse than whatever you see in these days. And in between all that, Yehuda, the leader of the tribes, gets involved in a complete and utter scandal, accidentally, has no idea what happens. Next thing he knows, he's involved in some serious TMZ-ish scandal. And before you know it, the entire Torah portion looks like one big, disastrous series of unrelated events. Now, what does the word and do? The word and connects two unrelated things and makes them one uniform whole. So that instead of it being this separate from this, it's this and this come together to form one beautiful whole. Now, the reason this Torah portion always begins with the letter and throughout every single sentence is because what looks to us as outsiders as a seemingly random bunch of bad events is actually one uniform, beautiful, whole preparation for something great that God is orchestrating. You see, sometimes it looks to us like there is no reason for what's going on, and there's just a bunch of bad, 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 bad. But what God knows is that these are all interrelated things that need to happen to set up the ultimate amazing thing. In this week's parsha, it's the creation of the Jewish people, which had to start down in Egypt. And in order to make that happen, a lot of bad things, or seemingly bad things, had to happen, which would later on end up saving the entire world and the entire Jewish people. See next week's parsha for further details. Through life, you see this all the time, where things happen to us and we wonder, why is this happening? We have to remember that this is not just a straightforward, nothing, no reason, God just is not looking out for us at all. On the contrary. This is another vav, another and in our life, which is connecting one thing to the next in order to get to the ultimate goal, which is our perfection. Everyone have an amazing Shabbos on behalf of Makar.